All right, our scripture reading will be from Luke chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. <clears throat> In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod Tequark of Galilee, his brother Philip of Itura and Trachononus and Linus Retart of Abilene, all them words, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough way smooth, and all mankind will see God's salvation. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. So as we continue our Advent series for this year around the theme of coming home, this, th this week's theme is called the fear of coming home. And now you might be thinking to yourself, that is a really odd thing to be talking about when we think about Christmas and the idea of coming home. Why would we ever take time to talk about fear? Why would we ever in introduce an idea that is negative in this season of joy? Isn't everything always supposed to be perfect at Christmas time? Well, yes, in a perfect world, everything would always be perfect at Christmas time. However, I'm sure that if you've looked around the world at any point since Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden, you can safely say to yourself, this is not a perfect world. See, when most people think about going home for Christmas, they are filled with excitement. And they are contented by the thoughts of seeing their family and their friends, giving and receiving gifts, and sharing in wonderful meals with one another. I personally cannot wait for breakfast on Christmas morning, as that is our tradition. However, that is not the experience that all people have when they think about Christmas. You see, for some people, the idea of coming home for Christmas is one that does fill them with fear. Perhaps when they were younger, Christmas was a time when they are reminded of how little their family had. Perhaps it's a time where they are forced to be with people that had abused them in their past. And for some, it is a reminder of that very, very difficult time in their lives. See, any one of these things can be a source of fear when you think about coming home for Christmas. Now this year, there may also be something else causing fear for some people. Maybe this is the first year that someone will be celebrating Christmas after the passing of a loved one. And they are wondering, what will it be like without them? And why do I feel so sad when everyone else around me seems to be so happy? And maybe they're just dreading the fear, that return of that feeling of loss that they've tried so hard to move past this year, knowing that that absence will be felt so strongly this Christmas season. You see, we have to be aware of the fact that not everyone is going to be as merry as we are during this Christmas season. And we have to be willing to acknowledge that others might be struggling this year or each year when Christmas comes around. And we have to be willing to show them extra love and care during this time when they are struggling. And in this way, 
we can help to bring some peace to them during this time. For those considering coming to church at Christmas time, there is fear as well as we talk about coming back to church as well as coming home. They may be thinking to themselves, ooh, I haven't been to church since Easter or last Christmas. Should I go this Christmas? And if I do go, am I going to be assaulted with a message from the pastor reminding me, hey, the church is open more than twice a year? Or are the people going to say to me, they're going to see me and say, well, look what the cat dragged in. Or yeesh, I thought maybe you moved since I haven't seen you for so long. For the people coming for the first time to a church, there is a fear that they feel like they don't belong. If I go to church at Christmas time, are they going to reject me because they don't know me? Or are they going to reject me because of how I look or the clothes that I wear? And what if I don't know what I'm supposed to do when I get there? Do I genu genuflect before I get in the pew? Is there something I'm supposed to do at the doorway? Why are they handing me this candle? When does it get lit? Do I join in the prayers with them or am I to remain silent? I just don't know what I'm supposed to do and I don't want to embarrass myself. Well, brothers and sisters, it is our job as the church to help these people alleviate these fears. Not just during Christmas time, but all the time. You see, in our scripture for today, we find John the Baptist beginning his ministry. John is fulfilling the words of the prophet Isaiah. John is the voice crying out in the wilderness during, prepare the way for the, of the Lord, make straight his path. You see, what John was doing was working hard to prepare the way for Jesus Christ to come. He is preaching to the people about how the Savior would be coming soon. And I've always loved this part of Scripture. Just a, a little bit further in Luke chapter 3, verse 15. As John had people coming to him, and he was preaching to them. As the people were in expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water. But he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. You see, John is out there doing what he can to prepare the way for Jesus Christ, and the people are listening to him. But then they begin to wonder, are you the Savior, John? And he says, nope, I'm not even good enough to touch his shoes. And I have to tell you, if John the Baptist is not good enough to touch Jesus' sandals, I am certainly not good enough to touch John the Baptist's sandals. So I'm probably not even good enough to look at Jesus' sandals. So when we think about what John was doing out in the wilderness, I hope you see how it applies to us today as well. See, in this time of peril, we want so much to bring peace to others. And while we can do this in small ways, while we should and we can and should be offering help and kindness to all, we have to remember that true peace in life comes from Jesus Christ. We are the ones that should be doing what we can to prepare and make the path straight for others. However, we have to remember that we are not the ones at the end of that path. It is Jesus Christ who is at the end of that path to peace. When we find those that are struggling with great fear and anxieties or we're coming home for Christmas or anything else, we must do whatever we can to show them the path that leads to Jesus. This morning, Wayne talked about the Grand Canyon and how low it is, right? How big it, how big it is. And I have to tell you, when I was a child, I always had this thought about the Grand Canyon of, well, what's the big deal? It's just a giant hole in the ground. And then we went to the Grand Canyon when I was younger, and I realized it's not just a giant hole in the ground. Well, it is a giant hole in the ground, but it's much more beautiful than just that. But even in those low places, something so large, if you were at the bottom of it, and that's where you feel that your heart and soul are, Jesus Christ can lift you out of that deep, deep valley. And it is our job to help people begin to come out of those valleys. 
So what can we do to make those paths straight for others? Well, we can start by making peace with others. You see, no matter how hard we try to live our lives in the way that Christ calls us to, there are times when we fall short. We fall short because we are human. And as such, there are times when we cause hurt to others. And if you know today that there is a hurt in someone's life that you have caused, now is the time to try and make it right. You see, now is the time to make straight the path for that person. And we are told in Matthew that when there is a problem between us and someone else, we are to stop whatever we are doing, even if we are at the altar, and go and make it right with them. Well, what better time than now to try and make things right? You see, if you want peace to be a part of this world, it must start with you. We can help to make the path to Jesus and peace straight for others by doing things like inviting them to come to Christmas service. Inviting those people and letting them know, hey, I will be right there beside you every single step of the way. You do not need to worry about, do you pray when we pray? Do you sit here? Do you sit there? I will tell you what this candle is for, and I will help you light it when it's time to light it. Do not worry about it. You don't have to worry about messing up during service because the people are going to accept you because I promise you they will. And now, church, I am calling on you right now, all of you right now, if you're going to love and accept the people that walk through our doors, no matter who they are, no matter what they look like, I want to hear you say amen. amen. Now, if you didn't say amen or you didn't think it in your mind and heart, because I know that we are a quiet people by nature, we like to leave the amenings and hallelujahs to the Pentecostals, you need to take this time this week and you need to really think about your commission to make straight the path for all. Now we also need to make sure that we are helping those that struggle this time of year. Those that don't always have a sense of peace or those that might be struggling this year to find that sense of peace. Let's make sure that we are checking on them, letting them know that we love them and that Jesus loves them. Last week during our, our All God's Children moment, a thought was expressed and it was this. And maybe it stuck with you the way that it stuck with me. Someone right now in this town is struggling this season with depression and the thoughts of suicide. And you never know who it might be. So be kind to everyone that you meet this season. Yeah, we're busy. So is everyone else. There is often a feeling of added pressure that comes with the holidays and that can lead to short tempers. Every year we see it on the news, uh, another fist fight broke out over a TV at Best Buy, right? Tempers run short this time of year. But brothers and sisters, in a world where so many are fighting their demons at this time, it might seem even harder for them to overcome them. So we have to make sure that we are out there doing what we can to help them. Being as kind as we possibly can to all that we meet and helping them to see that there is a path to peace. So as we move further into this season of Advent, as we move towards coming home for Christmas, let us do all we can to help bring peace into this season. Let us do all we can to help make straight the path for the one that is coming. My challenge for you this week is this. I want you to think of one person you know that might be struggling this year. Just one person. And reach out to them. Let them know that you are here for them during this season. And let them know that Jesus Christ is here for them every season. Amen.